Okay, another one. Uh, I'll we'll start from this position. We just got a sort of normal standard opening struggle, and uh, he's just moved his knight back to e2 to basically uncover a double attack on my knight. And I'm thinking about what, what do I do with my knight here? If I move back to b5, say, then his his um, bishop has a clear line on my knight. I have to, I have to take back with the um, oops. <laughs> I have to take back with the pawn and my king's. That G file has just opened up to my king. So I kind of studied long and hard. I thought I could exchange knights and everything. But whatever I did effectively, now I've... Because there's a, a double attack on my, my knight. Um, and I always like to try and mix things up. My next move was... Sacrifice the knight. And it's quite... It's, it's an interesting game. I thought I've got sort of an open line here. My pieces are generally ish fairly activated. Some of his pieces aren't activated. I thought this would be, this would, this could work out quite well, and I've opened a nice line to his king. Hopefully, I'll at least maybe try and win my piece back. And um, so I immediately come on the attack, and the next idea is to get a rook down this open e file. So um, and his ki and his king is also now yeah cannot run to the corner at all. He's still left with uh, not so much defences. So I go ahead and operate on this open e-file with my rook. And uh, he makes some surprising moves. I was not I was thinking he's um, literally going to try and think about what, what, he, what he can do to try and uh, push his king away, get a, squirrel it away somewhere, bring up some defences, exchange pieces. And, um, but he comes attacking me on the, on the, on um, is it the key? Um, yeah, attacks my bishop. So my bishop, I, okay, I, I had two choices, I suppose. I suppose I could move my bishop to here, but I'm just thinking this this was covering up now my my work on on this e file, and um, it's also blocked in by my own pawn, and it'd be pointing to his two pawns, which doesn't really help too much. Well, it's just far too passive, so um, I'm moving my bishop, keeping it on this open diagonal, and hoping this this tactic would pay. And what does he do? He's squeezing me big time now by pushing his h pawn. And um, now I have to kind of find out after he moves with h5, this this bishop is trapped. His pawns are coming in on my king. I'm going to be in big trouble. And um, so I look to see how to defend my bishop, and um, if you can try and find find the move here. All right, so I'm not pausing the video, and uh, it's queen to b5. Now this is actually flawed. What I'm trying to do is thinking about bringing my bishop to d3. Now um, this, he can he could he could attack this square again. At least I think he can. Maybe he can't. I was thinking he just rashly moved his pawn, and now my bishop's in freedom. I've escaped. I'm still on an active square. In fact, a more active square, maybe a bit too active and a little bit vulnerable, but as it plays out quite nicely. So yeah, he's now going to come to attack my bishop. So in fact, this is what it, the the move he should have played he, instead of this pushing the h pawn. I think he's a little bit rash, but. Um, I'll go ahead and make this uh, defending manoeuvre. He's now attacking my queen. Um, and I'll push my queen on this diagonal. It's probably worthwhile starting to try and have a look at the position. In fact, okay, we'll just make a couple more moves. He comes in with his uber-aggressive pawn tonight. And now I look at this position and study this position. And if you can try and find black's next move. Do I defend with the knight? Or move the knight away? Try and um, get out of these two pawns come in or do I continue over in his his king area are there any moves there to be made I think just in general he's got he's got a lot of things most things are kind of connected and covered 
So exchanging pieces isn't really maybe a good thing unless it definitely provokes a weakness. But the I think this is a, this is a winning move. It basically ruins his position after this, and that's the pawn to attack attack his knight. And now he's got no no room. What's what's he going to do about his knight? He could exchange knights, but now my pawn would come in. Um, if he if he were to attack my take my knight, and I don't even need to worry. I can go go ahead, take his knight, and now I've pinned his queen and his bishop, and he's just falling apart. So I'll go back to the move he did play, which was um, moving his knight out of the way. And now this covers my queen with his queen. Um, but I couldn't take this pawn. I think uh, I could 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 push this, but this um, my my bishop then becomes unprotected, and uh, yeah, he's in fact yeah, okay, so steady up. This uh, this this yeah, this, this move is um, death for him basically because I've got mate by the queen coming to um, b2 taking his knight, and there's no there's no escape. There's no way he can defend that square. Um, not without moving, he's putting his queen in the way or something. So um, he effectively has to sacrifice his queen in order to carry on. And now we've got an open C file to his king. All oh, my um, initial sacrifice opening the line to the king seems like a, a good choice. Uh, he's tr basically trying to unwind. I think it's possibly a bit greedy, but still. Um, and now I just I've got two moves. I should have asked you what that move was going to be. What's the next move as well? Is to move the um, bishop across. He's still in all sorts of trouble. And now after some exchanges, I can now move my my knight that's been stranded there for about five or six moves. And um, the guy's got no hope. Okay, he's checkmated a few moves later. Okay, 